Is Strava worth paying for? Now, in this video, I'm gonna go over the 20 paid features in Strava, and by the end of this video, you'll be able to make an informed decision on whether or not you want to pay for Strava. A lot of these features are quite in depth, but I'm gonna make it nice and clear for you guys and girls and give my two cents along the way and what I think and what I actually do and use Strava for. Now, I have all my notes here on my trusty iPad because it is quite in depth. So I'll maybe glancing down to look at those to make sure I get everything spot on for you guys and girls. First up, we have segment and specifically looking at segment leaderboards. Now to find this on mobile, you simply go to an activity, scroll down, you can then click on a segment and then you can see the leaderboards and your efforts. However, on desktop, this is much, much more in depth and it's better to view in my opinion. So on desktop, you can see your quickest time as well as the uh, com and the quam. We can also see your efforts over time on a timeline, which is nice to see because you can see how you're doing over time. You can also click onto each effort within the timeline to show some details. We also have the leaderboard down below and this is where it gets interesting because you can compare to other people. What we can do is look at results this year, only my results, specific clubs. Now what this does is it gives a little bit of a competitive edge to your sport, which in my opinion is not a bad thing to try and push yourself forward and push your friends forward with you. Within segments, we also have live segments and this is where you can actually start a segment either in the Strava app when you're recording a ride or a compatible device. Next up we have training log. Now this is essentially a log of all of your activities, a place where you can see them on a calendar and you can see them nice and clear. This is available on both mobile and desktop. Now on mobile, you simply go to you, your progress, and then training log. You can scroll through the months and the years um, using the calendar to see all of your activities nice and clearly. We can also filter and change the data within the circle to make it easier to find specific activities. On desktop, it's a little different. You just come up to training and training log from the main navigation. Um, we can see we have the data as well in the circles. We can scroll through months and years easily as we could on mobile. We can also hover over an item to give us a little bit more detail. And then on the left hand side, you also have weekly summary, which just sums up what you've done each week. Cumulative stats. Now this is quite in depth and it's probably one of the larger features available to paid users in Strava. It has its own section within the app. And in my opinion, it's much better to view all of this in the app. On desktop, it's kind of sporadic and split between different pages. So to find that on mobile, what we wanna do is go to you, and then we wanna to go to progress. Now we can see this week's activities as well as previous week's activities. You can click through on the graph to see each week. We also have goals here, you can set specific goals. This could be distance, time, elevation based goals. Um, you can set these for weekly, monthly or yearly. Next up, we have monthly activities. Here we can see our total for the month. So at the top, we have all activities. So this will combine all the different sports together. So if you run, for example, and cycle, you'll see your totals for both sports. We also have monthly recap. Now this is a little more in depth. This allows you to see the previous month. Now you can see your totals as well as activities on a calendar. You can also see your longest activity as well as any achievements that you've made in specific segments. Next up, we have weekly intensity. Now what we can do here is see how intense the current week has been. We can also swipe and we can see how intense previous weeks have been. Now you will see a large number here. Again, this is relative effort. This is calculated by Strava and you can see each week how hard that week was to the previous week. Moving on, we can see monthly fitness. Now this essentially gives you a score. Now you can change and see that over different time periods. You can also tap on the graph um, to see your score at a specific time. I mean, what does that actually mean? Who knows, because from my opinion, it's hard to actually just get a number and relate that to how fit you are. What's a hundred, what is a 50, for example. It also assumes that all of your activities have been recorded in Strava. So if you do a gym session, for example, that isn't in Strava, you may improve your fitness, but that isn't recorded. So do bear that in mind. Next up is matched activities. Now this is where Strava will compare activities that are exactly the same. So if you do the same run or the same ride, being the exact same route, it has to be the same route, it will group those activities and you can compare them over time. So on mobile, find that ride. If you scroll down slightly, you will see match rides. If you click through onto match rides, you can then see information such as your average speed on the activity as well as the time taken. And you can also see the relative effort. 
Now you can also do this on desktop, it's very similar. You wanna to navigate to the ride and then again, you'll be able to see match rides and you can see that same information as you can on mobile. Next up, we have race analysis. Now this is one for the runners. Essentially, it helps you understand how you are pacing your activity for a race. Pace data is bucketed into zones using grade adjusted pace. And that is gonna show you how long you spend in each zone. Now the zones are active recovery, endurance, tempo, threshold, VO2 max, and anaerobic. Next up, custom goals. Now it's worth a mention because you can set goals for specific segments, specific cycling power, personal time, distance. You can also set them for weekly, monthly, or yearly. So it is quite in depth, and it's nice to have a goal that you're trying to achieve. Now on mobile, we can go to the U section, and then go to progress, and then into goals, which is quite an easy way to do it. We can then add a goal in the top right hand corner, nice and simple. Next up, training plans. Now, training plans are available for runners and they are available for cyclists. Now, I've not actually used training plans, so I can't comment on how good they are and whether they actually work. I assume they're going to be okay. To view the training plans, you can go to desktop and then you click on training from the main navigation and then training plans. You can see there's a filter for cycling and running so you can swap between. And then you can simply click on one of the training plans and you can start that training plan. Next up, live performance data. Now this is information when you are actually riding or recording an activity with Strava such as speed, distance and location in real time on your mobile device. Super simple that one. You basically have the data when you're recording an activity. Pace analysis. Now this one is for runners only and this one basically helps you visualize your pace zones and lap data for all of your running workouts. Now you can see the data on grass, which clearly shows the information to you. Next up, we have custom heart rate zones. Now on desktop, you can go into settings and where you have your health related data, you can click on your heart rate and then you can move the sliders to change the heart rate zones. Now when you upload an activity, you can go into analysis and you can see which zones you were in. Next up, relative effort. Now we have seen this one a few times crop up because it is shown throughout the app. Now this is Strava's way to basically judge how you are doing and give it a number. Essentially what they say is it shows you how hard you're working and it shows you how to train smarter. Now it's worth mentioning for relative effort to be accurate and actually valuable to you, you need to record as much data as possible. So you need to record your heart rate data if you record your power meter data, for example, as well. It helps Strava understand how much effort you are putting out. Strava is also clever in working out that different activities take different efforts. So for example, if you cycle, run and swim, it knows the relative effort of those so it will adjust accordingly relative effort believe it or not is also relative to you you can't compare your relative effort with another athlete's relative effort yes Strava calls all users athletes next up beacon now beacon is essentially a way to share your live location when you are recording an activity you can set this up automatically so that when you start an activity it will automatically notify specific people and then they can see exactly where you are. Now, in my opinion, I personally think this one should be free because it is a safety feature. Next up, route generation. Now, this is actually quite a big one and I have actually done a full video on this. So if you wanna see that, I will leave the video in the description down below. Do check that out. But to give you a quick rundown, basically you need to go into the Strava mobile app and then from there you can select maps and then you can select routes. Strava will then generate three routes for you. Now at the top, you can change things such as the distance you want to take on, the elevation and the surface. You can also change the sport. Now this is potentially one of the best paid Strava features for me because finding routes is kind of hard, especially if you travel around, you're in a different location. You can simply turn the app on bam, you have free routes. Personal heat maps, now this is more just of a visual fun one. Essentially what you can do is go onto the map and you can see all of your activities on a map and you can see that the brighter the roads are or the tracks are is the routes that you have taken the most. But it's kind of nice to see just how much of like for me, the UK that I've actually covered uh, specifically in and around London. Next up, workout analysis. Now this is one specific for runners as well and it will allow you to visualize your pace zones and lap data for your workouts, for your runs. 
Um, it also allows you to see your split time. Next up, power analysis. Now, this is one specific for cyclists, and if you use a power meter, this information will be helpful for you. It basically allows you to see your weighted power average. It also helps Strava work out your training load and intensity, which ties into your relative effort. You can also view your data in power zones, so Strava will take each second of your ride and distribute it into a specific zone, as it does with your heart rate data. There is a lot you can do and see with this data so if this is important to you and power meter data is important to you then this could be a pretty good feature within Strava's paid features. Next up fitness and freshness. Now this is exactly what it says on the tin it allows you to track levels of fitness, freshness and fatigue over time. Now it's quite in depth how this is measured um, so I will potentially cover that in a separate video so do subscribe if you want to see that in the future. The more data you collect, the more accurate Strava will be, um, such as heart rate data and power meter data. It's worth noting that if you do any form of exercise outside of Strava, then it's gonna skew this information. Now you can see this clearly on desktop by going to training in the main navigation, fitness and freshness. As you can see, we have our current fitness, our increase or decrease over the last seven days. We also have filters, we can change on the graph. We can also hover over the graph to display specific data for a specific day. Next up, we have group challenges. Now, this is a new one that was introduced into Strava recently. Again, probably deserves its own video, so I may do that in the future. Now, what this is, is essentially a way for you to create a challenge and then invite users to that challenge that you have set up. Now, to do this, you need to go to the mobile app and go to groups and active, and you will see at the top group challenge. Now we can choose the activity you want it to be completed in. We can choose the start and finish dates. We can choose if it's a distance based or a speed based challenge. There are various options that you can select. Now, once we have created that challenge, we can then invite users. So you can invite however many you like. Now it's quite a cool little feature. Once it's all set up, you can then go in and see who is doing the best in that challenge. Next up, grade adjusted pace. Now this is one for the runners and it is a metric that essentially takes into account steepness uh, of the terrain during your runs and estimates the equivalent pace on a flat. So you can compare efforts uphill, downhill and flat terrain. Quite a nice little feature. I don't track running within Strava, but I can see how this would be very, very helpful to runners. Lastly, we have the weather. Now, this does actually affect your pace potentially, especially in cycling. If it is really, really windy and you have a headwind, you're gonna be riding slower. So basically what this will do is show the weather on your activity. Now, anyone who's viewing your activity can see the weather. So that is a nice little touch. And there we have it, all of Strava's 20 paid features. I really like the app and it is only four pounds a month. In London, that is less than a pint. So for all the features that you get, it is certainly worth it in my opinion. Now, I hope that helped you make a decision on whether or not you actually wanna pay for Strava Premium. If it did, then give this video a thumbs up. If you wanna see more awesome content, then subscribe. There is plenty more on the way. So as always, fine people, self-love, safe riding. I'll see you in the next one.